Hello, I'm Ravewood, and welcome back to Walheim. Today, we are not going to be joined by Darius. We're actually going to miss out on him this entire week. He has something going on in his life, and he's not currently in a place that he's able to play. And that's perfectly fine. We're going to let him tell that story if he wants to. That's his thing to tell. But that leaves me doing some independent episodes this week. And... In quite a few episodes, we've mentioned my single-player world. So, I thought we'd pop over here and go take a look and run around it a bit. So, this is the one that I started my first Graveheim series with. And after I quit recording, I kept playing in this world and just kind of made it my new single-player world. So, this is where I first kind of laid down roots and it's just kind of become my farm slash teleporter hub. I was hoping that this uh, little island here was far enough away, but things spawn over there all the time and then come over and attack me. It's really annoying. So I moved on to another place where I could make my base safer. So in, to that end, I came out here to this island chain. It's got more islands than you can see on the map here. I should go hit the map table so we can actually see everything. But there's this island right here, which you can see behind me, and I started off with that crafting hall that I originally used as both crafting hall and house, and then I expanded out and built the house, and a second crafting hall for specifically for making food and mead, and I've got a huge dock area here with a big smelting area at the port. I've got my own pretty nice little coal farm over here. This is a fantastic coal farm that has like nine different nodes to it or something like that. So I get tons of coal. Although I only saw two spawn there. Oh, and I like this. As I was digging this area out, I ran into a muddy scrap pile, so I just kind of incorporated it right into the build. This has been a huge source of just saving me a lot of time. Once it was built, I got so much coal out of here, I've never had to smelt down another log. Yeah, it's been great. Alright, so while we're at the port here, uh, over here I've got some logs out, and we're working on uh, cleaning up some logs here with the chopping block and the ads. Although I don't have any ads over there at the moment. Ads over here, that's it. And I've got this kind of dry dock area set up. I have a really hard time trying to figure out how to do a good dry dock in this game so this is the best that I came up with at the time and this is all still kind of a work in progress I'm adding more especially now that I figured out that trick with leaving the barrels behind or the boxes from the the carts that'll really help add to this place and make it look nicer make it more lived in anyways uh, let's start off with my house here this is one of the more recent additions and you can tell I've got a couple of these things out so that I can get my rested buff up as high as possible. It actually doesn't reach up to the high level there. So you can see above this peak, there's actually one more there. But it's kind of hard to see with the glare, so I have to keep looking down. Yeah, I had to put one right out the window to get the rested buff to get up there. And I definitely need to do some interior decorating. I was originally thinking of having my kitchen in here. So I put out lots of storage. But that didn't end up working out, so I just have my uh, my spinning wheels in here for spinning blocks in the thread. Yeah, so I'm going to make some nice seating areas in here, and this will all look great eventually. I've got work to do. And then I have people who come in and play in my world off and on, so I wanted to have some guest bedroom areas. And they each have some storage under the floor here. And so there's four beds here, a little sitting area so we can all get together and chat. And then upstairs is my room. Kitty, kitty. Come on. I'll pet you in a bit. He's uh, very big on pushing on the microphone and making noise. So I've got a little bit of decorations out here yet, but this was before I really started working hard on learning how to decorate. So. Not a huge amount yet. And just some shelves. I need to add in some chests and decorations to fill the shelves. Up top, though, 
is my throne room with a view slash treasury. So I've got all the money that I've collected up in this world and a bunch of other artifacts laying around like my diverger tankards and uh, flower crowns, some armor, although currently that one's empty. Got a stone golem trophy there that I like in the background. My pouring of celebration. Just some fun stuff to decorate the area. Oh, and here's my map table. I should hit that while I'm here. Okay. Yeah. And I love the Raven Throne. This is my go-to throne. So I can sit here and look at all my lovely treasure. Alright. Can't jump out the window, so I have to go back downstairs. Okay, now that my cutie's done with the scratching post, uh, this is my staging area for new builds that's become kind of inflated. Originally it just started off with a couple of chests that I'd come out of the portal overloaded with, drop my stuff off, and then take it to store it somewhere else. And then I just started filling it up with stuff after stuff. So this is all wood across the bottom areas and all stone across this top area. Oh wow, I took a lot of that out. That used to all be full across the top. Anyways, we'll uh, go see the project that I've been working on for that soon. So, this is ugly. I actually need to build a place to be able to have a better staging area and more dedicated stores for both wood and stone and also for collecting up other stuff that I want to use on the build. Over here is just kind of overflow. I need to build a large storage area. So just overflow storage. I need a big storage area. This is my main portal for exploring along the world. So I just come out here and then I've got all of my main storage right here. So I've got woods, leathers, just everything. Misland stuff, tar. A lot of the stuff also needs to go into a bigger storage area because I've got a lot of tar and black marble. It's like 11 to 13 chests just of black marble. And then here I've got crafting area set up. And I've just kind of thrown these in here. I need to make a better place for these two. They didn't exist when I originally made this place, so I didn't make a place for them. Although, I could take out that wall of chests right there. That's not getting used. And set up the the black forge there. And then I want to make like a wizard's tower to set the golder table in. Anyways, I've done lots and lots and lots of mining. You may have lots of eider. Lots of eider. And to uh, get ready for the ashlands, I went through and filled up this whole chest of play metal. When I hit this, the first full chest, instead of filling up this chest, I went and started taking it over to a second world where I play with my brother and we have a shared world. Kind of back behind here, I've just built this little simple bridge. It's one of the first things I built on the island to connect these two islands together. And I actually need to turn this into my main farming area so that I have a more local farm. And over there, I was thinking about making a little campsite. Okay. Crafting hall over here real quick. This is my main food hall, or kitchen. And I need to set up like a table in here so it can be a banquet hall also. But I've got tons of storage for everything. Unfortunately, at night, you can't read those signs because the light just comes up and hits hits it like that angle and goes straight up to the roof and misses that wall entirely. So you can't see any of the signs. It's such a pain in the butt. So I gotta fix that at some point and move those signs down. And then I've got more storage over on the side. So I've got tons of room for food, which is great. Over here is where I wanna make my, my bulk storage warehouse area so that I can store up excess stuff. I have an obliterator over here, but I honestly couldn't care less about obliterating things because I've got tons of coal. Alright, 
and as I was building this place up, I wanted a place to be able to view it at. So I built this watchtower over there on the northern island, and it's just called North Watch. The one thing that I really love about this place is how these arches turned out. I made this arched walkway through here, connecting up that little portal platform to the actual tower platform, and that just turned out to look really cool. It was fun walking down through this, and this is actually the origin of where I started building arches at. So I've started incorporating those into all of my builds ever since then. And another reason why I built this is, uh, I don't have any resin to fill it. I was putting out just a list of goals for the episode, what I wanted to do and talking about it at the start, and then kind of a list of future goals that I wanted to work on. But the lighting outside with the sun was always in the wrong spot. It was taking forever and ever to get the light in the right spot. And then I had a limited time to record. So I hated it and I moved it inside. But yeah, look at that view out over that island. It looks great. There's so much built up there. I can't wait to get the rest of this area built up. And it's gonna look really cool. You also have a great view out over the ocean. There's a big continent up to the north. And we'll get over there in a moment to talk about that. And more of these little rocks that are just sticking up out of the water because it's all pretty shallow around here. And I kind of want to build some more towers on those at some point. I love the feather cloaks to just be able to walk off stuff. Okay, let's go back and sleep real quick. Alright, so this is that island that I said that I'd show you in a moment. And this is just a big, nearly squarish piece of land that I raised the ground up and flattened it out. And that runestone there is one of the boar summoning runestones. So... This is a passive mob farm idea, and unfortunately it it works, it's just not great. Why is it not spawning anything? Usually stuff is spawned by now. Anyways, during the day, deer, neck, and boar spawn there with a little bit higher frequency of boar because of the boar stone. And then there's eight tamed one-star wolves there that just kill everything really quickly. And the idea was that I could just AFK here, let the wolves kill everything, come back every like 15 minutes or so, and check on it, go collect up the stuff. But the problem is the wolves end up eating the majority of the meat, and that's the only thing that I actually care about using this for. So it did not work out. Okay, why is nothing spawning in here? Super strange. And that is a boar out there. Hold still, boar. Ah. Got him. But still, one boar should not have blocked the spawn cap anyway, so that's really weird. Oh. Oh, well, as soon as we left, something spawned. Somehow that one boar was blocking the spawn cap. So yeah, we got a couple of gnack over here, and it looks like some deer rang over this way. So it sort of works, it's just not great. Because the boar, or the wolves eat all the meat. But I'm going to throw back out some crafting tables to block spawns, and shut this back off. This is the project that I've been working on that I built up that huge staging area collection for. And this is my new in-progress Mistland space. So there's these rocks that kind of stick straight up and they've got these little different platforms around the outside that's spiraling up to the top. So I took one of those that was on its own little island over here and started building up up and around and spiraling up to the top and I think it actually turned out really great. It's still definitely a work in progress especially the top level of the stone section here but I've got this platform that I actually want to rebuild now that I've got kind of the outer perimeter of it. So that way there I've got like concentric circles of stone going all the way around to the inside. 
now that all this is built up and supported. And then that'll look way better that way. Uh, this was just a ladder for viewing this throughout and haven't put away or taken back down yet because I'm still looking at the area. It was kind of a better view this way. That is a gigantic lanternfish. Did you see that over there? Ooh, that guy was huge. My poor longship is beached. Anyways, so I've got this lovely walkway and it's all got like arch column supports going up. And I, once again, I love these arches. It looks so much better rugging up this with the arches here. And I haven't started decorating or filling this area yet because it's still in progress of being built. But I've got a couple floors here. And then I want to build this out and have a stairwell going down and build across this area also. Probably just build straight across here and not down. Or maybe I'll have a little basement section. I'm not really certain. I, I tend to make builds up as I go along. And I also love this place because it's got a great view. There's a lantern there, a little decorative thing over there. And a uh, previously intact that bang emptied out tower over there so oh hi Thor so we've got some uh, little surrounding base elements that help add or little surrounding decorative elements to help add to the base okay so yeah I want to build out here and this is gonna be like the main hall but if we go up this way then we start spiraling up the rock I haven't decided if I want to cover this or not. Kind of do. I love these little columned rooms. Just full of windows so I can see everything. Oh, you know, I forgot that there was another straight up and down rock over there. Yeah, that's like three of them in this area. Cool. Anyways. Got another one up here. This one's open top. And I decided to leave it open. I feel like it has kind of Stonehenge vibes to it this way. And I actually might throw a few portals in here. And have just a couple key hacking portals to this area. That would be a great use of it. Up here, this is probably going to be my bedroom. Because I wouldn't use a bedroom. And then, as we spiral up top more, we've got the big open top area to be able to view everything and this gives you a great view all the way around you can see all the way down to the ground there and to the surrounding islands and you get to just look down on everything which is awesome this is where i might put out a stone throw room i've also been thinking and I'm not sure if i can pull it off but trying to build like a suspension bridge or something over to that stone over there and then have another spiral section of the base going down landing all the different platforms but not have it go all the way down to the ground and just leave that as the stack from like here up be part of the base and leave the rest of the island wild and untamed yeah i really love how this place is turning out it's got a ton more work to do on it and jumping off the top and just sailing down on the wind is so much fun. Also, it's way faster to get down this way. Alright, so this should just been a look through my single player world. This is actually my third world that I played in. And my second single player world. And I just absolutely love this place. But I want to pop over and do a quick highlight of my very first base. Alright, so this was the first base I ever made, and I started off with this wall around here for defense, and built little gatehouses, and I've got signs saying where the, uh, the roads go to, and look, this was a boar farm, where'd the boar go? Or boar pad, not boar farm. Anyway, this little, little watchtowers around the outside so I could see over the wall. And I, I kind of disguised the uh, earthen wall with the stake walls. And I think that looks good. Makes the place feel like a nice, uh, nice walled estate. And this was my first teleportarium. 
So I've got teleporters going all over the place. Oh, I don't have a sword like farm in this world. I do have a great dwarf farm though. That's cool. I need to build one of those in my other worlds. Anyways, this was my first house and I love this place. Uh, this was the origin of making my roof combs to kind of decorate the roof more. This I came back on and added on later. I don't think it was part of the original build. But to start off with, I got a little storage area outside for wood and stone. I guess it's all stone right now. And a little uh, garden behind the place. Got some turnips growing in there right now. And I've got this whole area is covered in crafting tables, but they're all hidden, so you can't see them. Like, there's one there, but kind of blends in as part of the build. There's one under the floor there. There's one underneath of each of the corner towers, or the gatehouses, so that you can, or it block spawns around the gates. There's probably like three or four underneath of that thing. That was going to be my warehouse. And I've got a little cart storage area here. And I use these crosses to make kind of see-through walls. Whew, I'm having some real loading issues, or leg issues. Anyways, uh, back to the house, yes. Put a little decorative flowers out here. And inside, I've got my crafting area and just some storage for all the general stuff so that I've got a stack of anything I could want right at hand. I can just grab stuff real quick, craft it up, put the excess back in there. Got some uh, extra weapon and tool and arrow storage. This should be boats. Yeah, boats and fishing stuff. This ended up just being overflow storage because I ran out of space, same with that. And this was my go explore the world portal. I can just portal back here and drop stuff off in these chests, which is still full of stuff also. And uh, come back here at any time. And then back here I've got more storage that I had to add in. I've got a ton of fermenter space going. My little cooking area which I had to expand, of course. That was a good question. Where is the expansion of that? Oh, that's right. I think I just threw it up. No? I think this world was too new. I never actually killed Yogluth in this world. I, like, barely found where Yogluth was. Anyways, I guess I don't have the expanded stuff. Expanded, uh, kitchen stuff yet. That's crazy. Yeah, this... This world was old. Alright, so I've got more chests here, just kind of storage and miscellaneous stuff. And at the foot of my bed, I've got a full set of backup gear and food. And there's a spare boating here and portal kit. And this was, if I died, I couldn't just run back and grab my stuff. I had everything right there to grab it and run back real quick. This little loft storage area is really cool because it's got this little raised section of roof here, which really helps break up the ceiling and roof line. But it also gives you little windows that you can see out along the way. And now that we have the different uh, building pieces like this, I should come back in here and fill in this section of wall. Like these pieces did not exist when I built this place. So, I didn't have any good way of filling that in. Anyways, I love the effect of how it looks on the roof, though. That roof has a lot of detail and character to it, so I really like how that turned out. This was my first building that I built by myself, and not just like fixing up one of the pre-generated ones, and it really turned out nicely. So, I was running out of space in the loft to store stuff, Oh, uh, actually, hold on, let's go ahead up this place first. So inside the house there, you can see just through the door there, I've got my crafting table. And I wanted to build a uh, forge. So I came out here and built this big covered area and set up myself a little smithy. Which, yeah. So this is my very first ever smithy I built. Oh, I've got some more... This is where I did the majority of my cooking. Very, very simple. But, as I was collecting up more stuff and going through the game, 
this place did not have enough storage anymore. And it was getting overflowed on some of the chests anyways. So I started working on building a warehouse. And this place is massive. The entire intention is that it would be massive and fairly ugly because of warehouses are. And store huge amounts of stuff. But I also uh, connected this up to the tower that you saw on the way into my base. Where I wanted to see how high I could build. And see if I could build up over the treetops. And the answer is kinda. Now, I've since learned more tricks, but this is only using the intended game mechanics of building with stone and wood, and it predates uh, tar, so there was no black wood. So it's got just stone and iron reinforced wood. Oh, and the iron reinforced wood is in the way right there. And I was working on getting the top here to be all covered up, but I was having difficulty because I'm just so high up. But it gives a great view down on the base. So this is my very first ever base from treetop level. And I love, I still love this tower even though it's ugly as sin, because I really can look out over top of the trees without using something like a tree to be able to boost the heights of the tower. So, there's just nothing but stone and iron reinforced wood and regular wood and core wood. Yeah. Man, that warehouse is really ugly coming back to it after so many years. Anyways, it wasn't intended to be terribly beautiful or anything. But I do love how this base looks. This is one of my all-time favorite bases. It's just got everything I need right inside it. it. It looks great being surrounded by the trees and just being this defensive oasis in the middle of the forest. I love this space and it's got a great view. There's one other area that I really like that I was in progress of working on when I quit. Oh, that's probably not it. This was the first farm that I ever made and I designed it all on my own, figured it all out by myself. But I love this place. This is a Grey Dwarf farm. And so this is all just kind of storage and space over here. The actual farm is in here. So there's these uh, Grey Dwarf nests. And if you dig out from underneath of them, then you can dig a pit. Grey Dwarf spawn on the ground around them. And these two star wolves just obliterate everything in here. And this is a truly AFKable farm. All I gotta do is just come in here every once in a while and pick up all the loot that they drop. And the Grey Dwarves just do not last even a second in here. The one key to building this is, you can't build anything directly over the nest itself. It can't be covered. You also can't have a crafting table in here. But yeah, the wolves just, or the Grey Dwarves just keep spawning. The wolves just obliterate them. And I get free wood and stone. So this place powered the majority of my my work in this world. And I actually want to build another one of these. I think I can do a little bit better job. But also, this place is just pays off so well. I've got so much stuff here that I was throwing out Grey Dwarf Eyes and Resin left, right, and center. It was so bad that I... Uh, had to find a way of getting stuff out past the the world or the crafting table range. So I built this little uh, little chute right here. That somehow I don't remember how I used to throw stuff in there. But somehow I used to throw stuff in there and that rolled down the chute and landed in here. And this was out of the range of the crafting table, so it can despawn in there. This was my early garbage disposal system. Nowadays, of course, we have the obliterator. Alright, and this was the last place that I was building. It was going to become my new main base in this world. And I love this place. Even though it's incomplete and undone, and I probably will never finish it. 
Oh, and there's a stone giant up there. Or a stone golem. Anyways, this is Frost Crag Citadel. And I built this. This uh, big stairwell going up here and winding through here, or up here, the mountainside. Cut a hole right through this rock and just kept on going. And I think it's really cool having that hole in there. And then it just goes up these stairs. And if I want, I can actually pull cards up this, up at least to here. And this was a natural tower that I rebuilt and expanded. And this is where I first found the motor portal. Although that, I don't think it's the way I went to. I don't remember going that far out. Anyways. This place is awesome. It's, you can spiral all the way up to the top here and have a lookout tower. This is kind of the gatehouse. But the main way in is going up through here and cut through another stone. I've got a hearth up there for some fire that looks great when it's lit up. And then you enter into Frostcrag Citadel. And this is main gate hall. This is where I, I first captured my wolves at. And then you can get, either go up or go down. Going down comes into the main throne room area with a uh, dual hearse, but I'm out of fire or wood. And somewhere in here, I don't remember all my plans that I had for building this, but. Yeah, I've got this big throne room here, and in here is the kitchen. Yeah, this is the kitchen, and over here is a storage room, just full of stuff. It's uh, got a bunch of building supplies there right now. Actually, the kitchen has most of it, if I remember right. Yeah, decorations, wood, stone, yep. And then... Back up top here, you can go up this way and kind of go along the edge of the wall, having a balcony overlooking the area. And this was going to be the main smithing area for crafting and repairing tools and stuff. And it's got a great view out over top of the mountains. I love this space. And then over this way is my bedroom above the storage hall, which of course is not complete. And one of the windows busted out. Oh, that was weird. Just a little stairwell back down here that spirals around and takes you right out to the throne. And of course, being in the mountains, I have to have Motor's Trophy hanging above my, my throne. Yeah, this was the project that I left off working on in this world. Or at least the main project. Actually kind of sad that I never finished this. This was one of the, the things that I really wanted to complete. And I might at some point come back and finish this just to do so. Because I love the potential that this place has. Not huge, but it looks really cool. And it's got incredible views off there. And the entryway is just fantastic. I love running up the mountain and through the rocks. And then using this uh, naturally spawning tower here to make an entryway up. Again, coming in through the rocks. Yeah, everything about this place is just really cool. Anyway, so this has been the very long look through my different bases in my single player world. Hopefully when you see me talking about my single player world with Darius in the future, you'll have more of an idea of what we're talking about now and some of the different cool stuff I've made. But for now though, we are out of time and until I see you next time, have fun gaming. Goodbye.